a Tennessee lawmaker has apologized for wanting to bring back lynching. Now, the House Criminal Justice Committee of the Tennessee Legislature was talking about a uh, different way to murder people because of, you know, of course, um, murder people convicted of crimes, let's, let's be clear, uh, when Representative Paul Sherrill suggested uh, his own addition. But I deal. And I was just wondering about, uh, could I put an amendment on that? It would include hanging by a tree also. And, uh, and also, uh, I would like to sign on to your bill, sir. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Talking about, uh, you know, uh, killing people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's hang people from the trees. What? Uh, okay, okay. And, and nobody there said anything. Uh, no, no, business as usual. Moving on. Let's t let's talk about the different ways that we are going to kill people. Okay. Um, now, again, that's disgusting because of not only the history of lynching across the country, but specifically in Tennessee. I again, a lot of these lynchings, a lot of people don't know this, uh, but there's a more of a carnival type atmosphere in these lynchings, right? So what do I mean by that? It again, there would be like food, there'd be music. They would, uh, you know, cut off and sell pieces of the person they are that they have lynched to sell to attendees or give to attendees as a souvenir. So hey, that's what they would do. Okay. So now this guy's hometown, Sparta, uh, had a car. Uh, uh, you know, was the site of a famous, infamous, I should say, lynching of a runaway slave who was dragged from the jail and hung from a tree in the town cemetery in 1855. Uh, one person who tried to stop said lynching nearly ended up on the uh, other end of the road. So, you know, to, to kind of bring this up, knowing how our carceral system affects overwhelmingly the black and brown community, tells you who this guy is and tells you exactly what he believes. So now, once this uh, remark, once his remarks went viral, the backlash came in and came in pretty hot. And he backpedals. Now, this is one of the statements here. This is from Gloria Sweet Love, the president of the Tennessee State Conference of the NAACP. She called his remarks, quote, beyond disgusting, which is true, and accused him of celebrating a particular form of execution used against African Americans in Tennessee and across the nation, including innocent and wrongfully convicted persons. So, and of course, there was a, a lot more backlash once those comments hit social media. Uh, and uh, so, a couple days later, Cheryl came out and uh, expressed some regret. Quote, I regret that I used very poor judgment in voicing my support of a colleague's bill in the Criminal Justice Committee on Tuesday. My exaggerated comments were intended to convey my belief that for the cruelest and most heinous crimes, a just society requires the death penalty in kind. Mm. Oh, oh, it was exaggerated. Nah, watch that video again, and uh, he was uh, he was pretty giddy about like, oh well, yeah, oh let's bring back, let's bring back uh, hanging people by a tree, <laughs> stringing them up. Oh yeah, but uh, let's get to the point of uh, the just society. Just society actually does not require a death penalty. Look, the state killing people doesn't help bring any sort of restorative uh, justice, right? It doesn't really help the victims at all. It might make them feel a little better seeing that the, the person who had caused them pain and anguish uh, gets executed. But at the end of the day, it, it is really sort of an empty thing because it doesn't bring anyone back. And again, it, it just... What's the point? What's the point? And look... On a more uh, practical thing, it's actually costly, more costly than keeping someone in prison. And now you might think, wait a minute, wait a minute. How's, how's keeping someone in prison cheaper than executing them? 
Well, see, it, th when it comes to death penalty cases, capital cases, there's a lot more that goes into it than just, okay, line the person up or put them in the chair. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, it, it, it's very complicated. In fact, you have to go through the entire legal system first in order to prosecute capital crimes effectively. Well, there's a lot that you have to do since it is dealing with killing someone for allegedly doing something so heinous that would usually murder uh, that would you know allow the state to put someone to death uh, as a punishment. So now in order to do this, uh, to prosecute these crimes, you need a lot of lawyers, a lot more lawyers, uh, a lot more witnesses, uh, a lot more experts, uh, a very long jury selection process, uh, pre-trial motions, separate trials for sentencing. When you think about that, all that adds up. And there's a lot more involved than if you were to do, uh, for example, a life sentence case. And so that's the point that I'm trying to make here is that there's a lot more involved in prosecuting capital crimes cases because of what the stakes are, okay? Uh, now, the most rigorous cost study in the country had actually found that a single death sentence in Maryland costs about $2 million more than a comparable non-death penalty case. Before ending the death penalty, Maryland had spent $186 million extra to carry out a total of five executions. There's another study in California that had spent over $4 billion extra for the death penalty since 1978. Jeez. Uh, and a study in North Carolina also looked at cases between the, years, uh, between the years of 2005 and 2006 and concluded that repealing the death penalty could have actually saved the state nearly $22 million in two years. Hmm. So yeah, it turns out um, it costs more to have the state kill people. And again, this is not just because of the method. And the method, the reason that they're debating this, bringing in new ways to kill people, to have the state murder people, um, is because the method that they had used, lethal injection, you can't really get those lethal injection drugs anymore. Uh, a lot of the uh, makers uh, of the drugs used in lethal injection are European. And they've, a lot of those European countries, uh, I believe the European Union has banned the death penalty. And so they refuse to sell to the United States because they're looking at us and they're saying, well, you guys are backwards. You guys are still killing people in prison? What the hell's wrong with you? Your carceral system is messed up. Uh, and so they won't sell us the drugs. Um, and so these uh, states that still practice state-sanctioned murder, they've had to be creative. And some of that uh, creativity um, has led to different, uh, them trying out, literally using uh, prisoners as like guinea pigs in order to find the most effective way of killing someone, and has led to some horrifying results. Uh, again, causing uh, massive suffering before the in inmate dies. Uh, and again, you might be like, wow, well, well, I don't care. Uh, somebody who uh, killed somebody, uh, they deserve it. They deserve it. They, de they deserve it. I am to think that, yes, uh, while they deserve a punishment, which I believe should be life in prison, locked away to protect society, I don't believe in inflicting suffering upon another living being just because they had done the same. This is this is the eye for an eye, you know, uh, argument that they're using, which, again, it doesn't really do anything when it comes to restorative justice. OK. And so now, finally. Let me note that according to a Columbia Law School study, 68 percent of death penalty cases end up being overturned. So that also gets to uh, two points here. Number one, how often they get it wrong. Because they get it wrong a lot. People on death row uh, have been posthumously uh, exonerated because they found new evidence. Well, it sure didn't help them. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's horrifying.
right? Uh, and and the second thing is, with those cases going to the cost, with those cases being overturned, well, guess what? Uh, now they have to pay for a whole new trial, have to pay for a whole new sentencing, all that stuff to, to get it more correct. So even more cost, even more cost. So as I said before, um, what we could do is not kill people. <laughs> Again, not restorative justice, right? Uh, not, you, you know, and th yes, sure, there are some people that I don't believe, and I think it's rare, but there are some people that might not be able to be rehabilitated, and that sucks. That does suck. But I'm talking about the death penalty. There's no reason that that should exist. It just shouldn't. So, that said, when we get to Cheryl, Cheryl loves state-sanctioned murder. Especially uh, I involving black people. In fact, uh, I'm going to take a look at some of his past actions and statements and uh, see if perhaps maybe he might be a little bit racist. Cheryl happens to be one of two sponsors of a bill uh, to rename part of a Nashville street. Okay, uh, so now this street, uh, he wants to name after uh, Donald Trump. Okay, do I have an issue with that? I mean, that'd be pretty stupid, you know, walking down Donald Trump Avenue, but who cares? Right? Sure. Uh, now, the issue here is that the street already has a name. Uh, it just happens to be named after the late civil rights icon, Representative John Lewis. Why choose that particular street? That seems odd. It couldn't... I mean, it's not like there can't be a John Lewis street and a Donald Trump street somewhere. You could do that. Why does he have to... Why does he have to have a bill to replace John Lewis with Trump? Hmm. Hmm. I think we know. I think we know already. Uh, and there's more. Um... He was one of only two state legislatures, uh, legislators, sorry, who voted against a 2022 bill requiring schools to include black history and black culture in their curriculums in grades five through eight. Huh? Huh? We weird. I, oh, that's very strange. I wonder, wonder why he would do such things. I, I just, I don't, I don't have an explanation. Oh, maybe I do. The Republican Party's racist. No, that, that could be it. That could be it. And if that is not enough, uh, he's also bigoted, uh, allegedly. Uh, Cheryl was also the co-sponsor of a 2020 bill that ensured private adoption of foster care agencies could reject uh, gay couples because, hey, uh, we would rather children uh, be, or you know, be, be in orphanages and uh, in the foster care system instead of, uh, you know, having them adopted by two Loving parents that just happen to be of the same sex. Something, something, family values. Now, look, uh, he also, by the way, last month, championed a bill to ban gender-affirming care for transgender youth. Again, uh, that would track with his uh, not very pro-life position because, you know, studies have shown uh, and we have evidence that uh, gender-affirming care actually saves trans children's lives. You know, that's... Now, look, the reason that I point out his history is to make an argument that his apology is bullcrap. Bullshit. Or or better yet, that. Okay? Um, in my opinion, I think he's a racist. I think he's a bigot. And I think that uh, he kind of betrayed himself by not being able to contain his excitement in wanting to bring back, essentially a legal form of lynching. 